Hey, what's up? So I made a list of some of the most common issues I've encountered when running Arch and a troubleshooting guide for the solutions for those issues. This is pretty much intended to be kind of a quick start to point you in the right direction if you're troubleshooting, you know, any Arch related issues. Maybe if you're relatively new to Arch and you're not really sure where you're supposed to be going on the Arch Wiki, but keep in mind the Arch Wiki is the ultimate resource pretty much. So this is essentially intended to point you in the right direction for then going to the Arch Wiki and figuring out what you need to know on it. Um, but I tried to, you know, streamline this so that way if you're relatively new to Arch and you're not really sure what direction to go in, this should hopefully point you in the right direction. The most important thing I could ever say is always read error messages fully. Okay, if you're getting an error message, it's probably going to tell you exactly what's wrong and exactly how to fix it. So read it carefully. If you don't understand it, try to break it down into pieces and see if you can, you know, look up the different pieces that you don't understand and read logs as well. Okay, actually go through and check the logs because the logs will also probably tell you what's going wrong. And also remember, there can be unintended consequences anytime you change something about your system, whether it's something as simple as a configuration file or updating or installing a package, whatever. You could accidentally impact something else that you didn't originally think would be impacted, but there's a chance, you know, something you think is unrelated actually is related. So just be aware of that. If you changed some random thing a week ago and now you're experiencing an issue, it could be related. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Anyways, the most important issue, of course, is if you can't actually boot, if you can't either get into Grub or get into Arch past Grub. So first of all, if you can't get into Grub, so you're just essentially getting like a black screen, you just, it doesn't even show up, right? The tool for that is Super Grub because that way you can actually get back into your operating system and troubleshoot further from there. Um, Super Grub is an ISO, so just keep it on a USB stick. I've got my essentially emergency USB stick. It's got Arch ISO and Super Grub on it. And this is essentially like the lifesaver tool for if, you know, I can't boot into Grub for some reason, I can still get back into my operating system. If I need to, you know, do work and then troubleshoot, you know, a day later when I actually have time, I can still get back into my operating system. So this is the page for Supergrub uh, with great art, of course. Um, it's essentially just a recovery tool. Uh, this is what it's going to look like when you boot in. So it'll just give you an option to scan for boot entries, just scan for boot entries, and then you'll get, you know, various boot entries that are on your system. And then you can just boot into the correct entry there and you should be able to get back in. And then when you, once you actually do have time, you can go through and troubleshoot, you know, what went wrong with Grub, why isn't it showing up? Um, obviously go through and try to read error messages. If you do have any sort of errors or logs you can reference, try to figure out what went wrong. If you really can't figure it out, you can just reinstall Grub. Uh, but if you are going to reinstall Grub, just make sure you're also re-updating um, re your configuration when you reinstall it. So just run make config again. If all else fails though, reinstalling Grub didn't work, nothing else seems to work, you can try using a different bootloader. And I recommend this with some hesitation, but I did still want to include this because this actually was a solution to an issue for me because I had a issue of hardware incompatibility. Uh, my motherboard was not playing well with Grub and it was something having to do with the motherboard and the drive being in a specific slot and just Grub was unable to be detected for some reason. The Grub installation, even though it was installed correctly, just wasn't getting detected. and. I realized it was a hardware issue because I had looked it up and seen, okay, other people with the same hardware as me are getting the same issue where it's just not detected. And for whatever reason, Refind did actually work. Um, and that was the sort of, it was a sort of situation where it wouldn't have been worth spending hours and hours trying to figure out, all right, well, there's clearly some incompatibility here, but I'm not really sure what's wrong and nobody really has a solution to it. Whereas this other bootloader is just working and it took me five minutes to install. So I'm not going to, you know, make my life hard when it doesn't have to be. So just be aware there are sometimes situations where using an alternate program is the most effective solution, even though I would generally encourage, you know, try to go through and troubleshoot and understand what went wrong. Sometimes hopping to a different program might do it for you. Anyways, so if Grub does show up, but your kernel or init RAMFS is missing, First of all, I should explain what initRAMFS is since it's a pretty important concept. So it stands for Initial RAM File System. And essentially it's a temporary root file system that's gonna get loaded up into memory, into RAM. And it has all of the drivers on it needed to actually mount the real file system. That's probably the best two sentence explanation I can give. 
and that is supposed to be getting regenerated every time you update your kernel because MK and its CPIO, which is really just a bash script, is supposed to be getting run every kernel update with a Pac-Man hook. And in general it is, but if for some reason you modified, you know, kernel modules or some sort of configuration somewhere and it was supposed to have been ran, uh, MK and its CPIO was supposed to have been ran and it wasn't ran, and you're now getting an issue where you can't boot in, you can try running it. The dash P flag is just for all presets, but you can check the flags on it and see if another flag makes most sense there. And in theory, that should help you out. If that doesn't, you can also just try reinstalling the kernel. So Linux and Linux dash firmware, or if you're on the LTS kernel or another kernel, just corresponding to the kernel, um, use that. Uh, if you have managed to interrupt your system mid-upgrade, so you were upgrading, you accidentally quit out of the terminal, the first thing to know is don't reboot. If you can avoid rebooting and you interrupted an upgrade, don't reboot. Instead, just reperform that upgrade. So reopen a new terminal, reperform the exact upgrade you were doing. If a reboot was unavoidable, like your power went out or your PC crashed while you were upgrading, um, which unfortunately it happens sometimes. So just go in with the Arch ISO check var log and then pacman.log and you're going to have all of the pacman logging information in that so just skip through until you can figure out what packages you were upgrading and then replicate that upgrade exactly from there you should be able to boot back in and that's a situation where you know it might show your kernel is just missing or corrupted or something i don't think it actually says kernel corrupted but your kernel might be missing if you were in the middle of upgrading it and then it crashed and you know it was partially upgraded so it's not valid anymore um, next up, if your file system is not found or your drive is read-only, so for example, you just got a new drive, you're going to use it as a spare backup drive, you plug it in, it's read-only. The first thing to check is your FS tab. So in theory, that if it's just an external drive, you should be able to boot in properly. If you can't boot in properly, then just go into the Arch ISO, mount partitions and Arch Troot back in. Check your FS tab and make sure everything there is configured correctly and it has the correct flags. So read-write flags are actually set up correctly. Um, if you have a read-only drive, just make sure that the flags uh, actually got changed to read-write and if they didn't, change them manually. If for whatever reason UUIDs are out of date in your FS tab, you can just regenerate with new UUIDs for your partition UUIDs. You can also see UUIDs with uh, lsblk-f, that'll show them. There's a, a couple other commands as well to show them. I think block ID, blk ID will also show them. Next up, if your file system is corrupted due to power failure, so you your PC just crashed and your file system is now corrupted, your root file system, for example, you can use FSCK to check and repair it. Um, FSCK on a partition will automatically repair, uh, but if you your system powered off, you know, it crashed and there's no journal left because it crashed in the middle of something, right? If you can't find an external journal, unmount the partition, uh, write a new journal with tune2fs-j uh, and then that partition and then run FSCK again. And this is actually copied right from the Arch Wiki, which has more information about FSCK. So I recommend go read about FSCK if you do need to repair file system corruption. I wanted to include this since I know this is something that can happen. I personally haven't had an issue with file system being corrupted, but you know, if your power goes out, it could happen. So just something to keep in mind. All right, so if nothing else works, you've tried everything, you can't boot, something is seriously wrong. This is pretty much a last resort, but you can reinstall your system. And this is where I would say having a separated root partition, so a separate root partition from your home partition is really helpful because sometimes either, you know, you can mess up your root partition yourself. I've done that many times by, you know, accidentally running, you know, stupid commands, sudo, typos, messed up the root partition, need to reinstall, right? It happens. Um, or, you know, just something went seriously wrong. So having your partitions separated is pretty helpful. If they're not separated, you can still reinstall, but just make sure you've backed up all your home directory and anything else important. And that goes, you know, in general, whenever you're doing anything with partitions, back up your data, make sure you're actually selecting the right partitions to do something. Just always, always keep backups of important files. I can't, I can't stress that enough, honestly, keep backups. Anyways, if you have decided you're going to just reinstall your system, you can save a copy of your currently installed package list. So if you've been using yay, you can use dash qq, just save it to a text file. 
And then after you've just reinstalled, you know, as per the installation guide, you can reinstall yay. You can then yay-s and then just cat out that text file of the packages and then you can just reinstall your packages from there. And this can also be pretty helpful if you want to set up a new system with the same packages as your current system. So you're trying to, you know, set up a laptop and you know you're going to want all the same programs on it. Just save a list of your currently installed packages, SSH in, grab the list and then install them. And that actually brings me to the next category, which is Pac-Man and package issues. And I wanted to first point out a recent news update here, which is that a couple years ago, the community repository got merged into Extra, um, but these repos were still in etsypacman.com for a while. And if you have these in your etsypacman.com, you now need to remove them because they're fully depre deprecated. So uh, just go in with sudo and edit this, make sure you're just editing it as root since you'll have to in order to save it. And that way you should be able to avoid any errors when updating. Um, but this is, you know, actually kind of a good PSA because this is just, you know, one of those cases where actually keeping up, keeping up to date with Arch News will save you from errors. Um, this was from, I guess, a couple days ago, a few days ago now, and uh, I changed this immediately so I didn't get any errors. And if you are keeping up with either an RSS feed or you just check the website every so often, you should be able to avoid a lot of errors. There's a lot of important info that gets published. So general PSA to keep up with Arch News updates. Anyways, if you're running out of space on your root partition and you haven't cleared your cache recently, clear your Pac-Man cache. You can sudo pacman-sc, which is going to clear unused. Um, SCC is going to clear everything, so just pick whatever makes the most sense and clear your cache, clear out old packages. You can also set up Pac-Man hooks if you want to do this automatically, either at a certain time or every update. It'll remove, you know, for example, the uh, any packages before the last three installed for example, or, you know, you can set up all sorts of different ways to clear the cache, but this is something where it can take up a lot of space if you've got a ton of old cached packages, so clear it every so often. Um, next up, if you haven't updated in a while, so for example, like a month or more, and you're getting package signature errors because you tried to just, you know, pacman-syu and everything seemed to work until you get a bunch of signature errors. The first thing to do is always update the Arch Linux keyring. And I would suggest just going ahead and updating it first anytime you're performing an update that you, after you haven't, you know, done it in a while. So like a month or more, probably. Um, you can do it with this one liner or you can just go get the keyring first. And this is pretty much the only time where you actually should be performing a partial upgrade. Uh, partial upgrade meaning you know upgrading one package but not upgrading everything else um obviously upgrade the other packages after you've upgraded the keyring but the keyring is going to be needed in order to get valid signatures for the other packages so just make sure to upgrade the keyring first if you haven't upgraded in a while Next up, for mirror-related errors, if you either forgot to set up your mirrors when you installed Arch, or mirrors do sometimes go down after a while, you know, sometimes they'll go down for a day or two if there's like a power outage somewhere, or sometimes they just go down permanently, it happens. So if you need to resync your mirrors, you can use Reflector. Um, this is an example command for Reflector. If I actually open up uh, the man page for Reflector here, there's a bunch of other examples here. So you can, you know, for example, set for country flags, etc. Um, so just pick whatever flags make the most sense and re-update your mirrors with Reflector. If you can't use Pac-Man though to get reflectors because your mirrors either aren't set up or they're all not working, you can just download the TarGZ manually and then just install it manually with Pac-Man, Pac-Man-U, and then put the file path for the package there. And then you should be good to go ahead and run Reflector. Next up, unable to lock the database. So this, uh, there's a lock file for Pac-Man. It's essentially to prevent you from running two instances of Pac-Man at once. So if you tried to run Pac-Man and then you forgot about it, tried to run it again, you're probably gonna get an error saying that you can't run it twice, right? Uh, which is fine on its own, but if for some reason Pac-Man gets interrupted while it's changing the database, the old lock file is gonna stay there. And then you're just gonna be able to, you're gonna get an error and not be able to run Pac-Man at all pretty much. So. If you do get an error that says something about unable to lock the database, just remove that old database file, var lib pacman and then db.lock, and then from there you should be able to run pacman again. And then if somehow you messed up pacman to the point where you cannot run it, something really went wrong with it, you can reinstall, or sorry, not reinstall, you can install the statically compiled version, then reinstall everything, make sure that everything works. Or if for some reason that doesn't work, you can just boot into the Arch ISO and reinstall Pac-Man from there. And then you should be good to go with Pac-Man again. 
And I think that, yeah, that's the end of the list for now. So I'm sure somebody's going to have some sort of correction on this um, or, you know, a better way to do something. So let me know. I will add that to the description if there is anything that, you know, gets corrected on this. I'll probably have to make a follow up video to this at some point, too, since I'm sure you guys are going to comment with other troubleshooting things that I really should have mentioned. But these were the things I thought of off the top of my head for, you know, stuff I wish I had known when I started using Arch. Anyways, the Arch Wiki is a good resource. Um, you can use this video, but use the Arch Wiki more. Use the Arch forums. Anyways, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Peace.